The perspective of a game can completely change when you view it from a totally different angle. Thanks to some in-depth and well-thought game theories, you may never look at some of your favorite games the same way ever again. From character perspectives to secrets Luigi's been holding on to for years, learn about these theories and how we've been playing Minecraft all wrong since its release. By the time we're done, we can all go back and play some of these games like we've never seen them before. Super Smash Bros. and the Toys – The Master Hand One of Nintendo's more innovative games will always be Super Smash Bros. Where else could you have Pac-Man do battle with Solid Snake when all of a sudden Princess Peach comes in with an attack of her own? The mixed franchises and fast-paced action has led to a pretty convincing theory over the years. The characters in Super Smash Bros. are all just actually toys being played with by children as they create fun and exciting battle scenes. Wow. So Super Smash Bros. is pretty much going all Lego Movie on us as the characters are really controlled by kids who make up these fantasy battles. So where's the proof? In the form of the game's main boss, the Master Hand. The Hand isn't just some cosmic boss, it's the actual Hand who plays with the toys and gets a little too over-aggressive at the end. Nintendo gave us another hint at the whole secret storyline when the company released their extended Super Smash Bros. Wii U game trailer, where a young boy collects an amiibo and actually trains in person to learn the skills of the fighter. With the release of the amiibo, we are all essentially becoming our own forms of the master hand by taking control of the physical Nintendo toys. Pokémon's War When we first started playing some of the original Pokémon games, we were too focused on collecting monsters to truly notice the world around us. Well, turns out the world may be pretty grim. Ever notice the severe lack of male figures and role models in Ash's life? Well, a theory speculates that the game takes place in the aftermath of a pretty devastating war. A number of the male soldiers were lost in battle, leaving orphans behind and possibly explaining the reason Ash has no father. More evidence is present in the Kento region where there are far too many hospitals. The buildings were obviously erected to help heal the wounded when the war ended. Proof in the game can be found directly during a gym battle with Lieutenant Surge. Surge talks about how an electric Pokémon saved him during the war. So not only was this a devastating war, but one where Pokémon were involved. Now that's a prequel game we'd all love to play! Knowing the news about the war, you have a lot more sympathy for the characters. And it just makes you want to explore the areas more without just hunting for more Pokémon. Animal Crossing's Creepy Town Who doesn't love the cute world of Animal Crossing? You get to live among walking and talking animals as you grow and thrive in the world. Only, this may have been a world the main character was forced into. What exactly are we talking about? Well, let's go back to the origins to figure all this out. The game starts when you seemingly wake up on a bus. How did you get there? Why is a creepy cat talking to you? What's going on? Then you show up in a town where you can't escape. You're home. While you do get to decorate it at a later point, essentially looks like a small and dirty jail cell. The room even features a shoddy and broken down radio. Oh yeah, there's also the mayor whose first greeting includes a passage about always watching you. One of the masterminds behind the devious plan to turn you into a slave citizen? None other than Tom Nook. Without a penny to your name, Nook claims that you took out a whole boatload of money and must work to pay it off. There's no choice to argue, run away, or battle Tom Nook for the truth. Your character is basically forced into the life, feeling trapped with no way out. Yeah, we're viewing the cutesy world of Animal Crossing a whole lot differently now. Mario Must Protect Luigi – Paper Mario 1000 Year Door this theory involves the most popular pair of video game siblings, Mario and Luigi. The duo have been side by side for multiple decades now, but maybe there's more to it than just their brotherly bond. The whole time Mario may have been protecting Luigi from causing mass destruction to the whole Mario universe. Yep, if a theory proves to be correct, the goofy Luigi is far more powerful than we have ever realized. Luigi's secret power of destruction has been revealed in numerous games, especially the Mario RPG titles. Super Paper Mario had a huge reveal. Luigi is actually the reincarnation of Count Black's great-grandfather. But what does this mean? That he's actually able to host the Chaos Heart, an item that can literally blow up the entire world. Mario must keep his brother in line to protect the world and prevent Luigi from causing his own destruction. More clues come in the form of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, where Luigi's side quest turns into a huge disaster full of destruction. So maybe Luigi isn't as innocent as he seems. We've all been a little freaked out from his evil Mario Kart face. With Mario there to keep his brother in line, we haven't seen Luigi gone all out yet. And hopefully all the Super Mario Odyssey balloon games will keep him distracted. The Minecraft Star The endless world of Minecraft is filled with plenty of mysteries, hidden diamonds, and of course the creepy woodland mansion. But one of the biggest mysteries of all has to do with the planet itself. 
There's a theory that the Minecraft world is actually a dead star, one which became inhabited after the star fully burnt out. The proof of this star theory comes not from deep-rooted message boards, but from actual science. In the game, when you observe the moon and the star, they are always on the opposite side of each other. The constellations in the sky also remain in the same place. This means that, like our own sun, everything in the solar system rotates around the main Minecraft planet. So you may be asking, if the land's a dead star, then what burns up in the sky? Well, that was likely the former planet Alex and Steve used to live on before setting the planet ablaze and making it their dwarf star. It must have taken several decades to build up the population on the dead star, and traveling to the unknown land is probably what helped lead to the zombies and other creatures that fill the game. Super Mario Bros. 3 The Stage Play we always have to wonder how many times does Mario have to go and save Princess Peach? Well, maybe there was one time where Peach wasn't in peril at all. Maybe, just maybe, she was acting. And that's where we head with the popular theory on Super Mario Bros. 3. The NES game has an interesting theme to it. The very first thing we see in the title screen is a curtain rising like the whole place takes place on a stage. Then check out the backgrounds. It looks like all of the props are nailed in or attached to the background. And the end of each level showcases Mario running off the set. The level just ends like Mario is running off stage for a wardrobe change. So maybe Super Mario Bros. 3 is actually a dramatization of Mario's journey from the very first game. And if this is true, we have a couple more questions. Like, does this mean Bowser is playing himself in the play? Does someone else play Bowser? Or did Bowser take his method acting too far and actually kidnap Princess Peach towards the end, which led to the great battle outside and inside Bowser's castle? Quick side note, maybe it's finally time for Super Mario to head to Broadway. And another side note, if you're enjoying the video, be sure to check out one of our other great gaming videos, like if Mario villains took over Nintendo. Metal Gear Solid 3 Virtual Simulation Mario's adventures on stage may not be the only game where main characters are pitted in a fake situation and we didn't even realize it. In another game with 3 in the title, there's a huge theory making the rounds that Metal Gear Solid 3 is actually a virtual simulation and not a real adventure Snake went on. Like snakes sneaking around an army base. Let's gather and take a look at some of the clues. In the very beginning of the game, we learn about the virtuous mission, but instead of saying virtuous, there's one point where Snake calls it the virtual mission. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? Simple error or a sign to something deeper. Well, later in the prequel game, there are times where Snake has the opportunity to eliminate enemies who appear in future set games. If he decides to off them, the level instantly ends and a time paradox error appears on the screen. Snake, what have you done? Change the future. You created a time paradox. This may cause Snake to reset his digital experience so he doesn't mess with the timeline and can go through the proper events as they were intended. Kirby and Shiver Star We've already explored the strange Minecraft planet, but a theory about one of Kirby's planets may be even stranger. In the game Kirby 64, one of the levels is called Shiver Star. As Kirby descends onto the planet, take a good look at the frozen design. Very faintly, you can actually see the outline of North America and South America. So is Kirby visiting planet Earth? Well, if he is, Earth is now a post-apocalyptic frozen state. Sure, there's old buildings and factories, but not a human in sight. The only thing we see living on the planet are robots and some wild animals. What does Kirby know that we don't? We must know how our planet ended. Now it's time to go back to all the Kirby games to look for any clues. And the next time you play Kirby 64, the whole Shiver Star world takes on a whole new meaning, where you view it as Earth without any human life. Instead of just going through the motions, take your time to explore, look for deeper clues, and wonder exactly why some animals survived while humans did not. Donkey Kong Country is anti-American. Donkey Kong Country has always felt like a fun and simple game. Hop around, ride some minecarts, and collect bananas. But what if the game we've always loved actually had some anti-American messages packed into it? Well, that may be the case according to one theory. The oil-based levels are supposed to be references to Americans drilling for oil all across the world, and destructiveness that comes with it. Many of the enemies in the game have militaristic features, representing American invasions and wars based around oil fields. There's also a pretty big connection to all those bananas in the game. For many years, the United States owned the United Fruit Company, where they would import bananas from all around the globe. According to multiple stories, these bananas were stolen, or forcefully taken from natural resources, sometimes even resorting to military action when needed. So when you're bursting the barrels in Donkey Kong Country and freezing up some bananas, these are supposed to represent how the United Fruit Company was planning on shipping them from the country. Who knew there could be so much controversy and drama over bananas? When you're playing as Donkey Kong, you are not just collecting bananas to eat, you are saving the fruit from his homeland. 
The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, and the Five Stages of Grief. As Link goes on his Nintendo 64 adventures, he may not say anything, but there are plenty of emotions going through the little guy. In The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, the beginning of the game starts off with the devastating loss of Navi and the potential of a moon crashing into the planet. The journey Link goes on through the world is not just a memorable action adventure, but many diehard Legend of Zelda fans have noticed the game represents the five stages of grief after the loss of Navi. The first stage, Denial. The residents of Clock Town do not believe the threat of the menacing moon or any of the warning signs. The second stage comes in the form of anger, clearly showcased by the rage displayed by the Deku King. There's a lot of bargaining, the third stage when a hero wants Link to bring him back to life. We see plenty of depression in the form of Lulu, who isolates herself, and finally Link takes on the fifth stage, Acceptance. Link accepts his flaws, leaves his masks behind, and is able to continue on his journey. So the next time you're dealing with any type of grief, maybe you should pull out the classic game and play through the levels to have Link help you cope. Wow, those theories are not just game changers, but could dramatically change the way we view games. Which one was the most compelling? Which one makes you want to play right now? Any great theories we missed? Well, let us know in the comments, and stick around The Gamer for more great video game content. We're releasing new videos every couple of days. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with the channel.